Hey everyone, what is up? In today's episode, we're gonna go over Next.js, what it is, and whether or not you should use it in your next project. So first off, let's start off with what it is. It is a React framework for the web. And what is a framework versus a library versus a language? Well, a framework is a full stack application. That means you could use Next.js, you could deploy it, and you could have backend functionality along with front-end functionality all in one set of code. And that's what makes it really great to get up and running very quickly, but that also does have its downsides. A framework is an opinionated set of code, and so if you don't follow the, the opinions of that framework or you don't agree with it, well, tough shit, because you gotta follow it in order to, to use it. Um, and where does React come into things? So React is a library. So a library is targeted for specific functionality. And in this case, React is targeted for a front-end user interface. So if you go to a website that uses React and you click on a button, that is interacting with React. And so React makes it super easy to have um, state. So like, let's say you wanna modify the state of a table inside of a website. And so it makes it super quick to be able to modify what that UI looks like. And then once you push something or make a change to that UI, usually you're pushing to the back end. Um, and that's where Node comes in. Node is the back end code or back end library for Next.js. So in Next.js, we're using React on the front end and we're using Node on the back end. And to tie all of this together, the language that's being used is JavaScript. So this is where it gets a little confusing because JavaScript is the only language that you can use on both the back end and the front end. So it makes it great so that the same engineer can work on both sides of code, back end and front end. That used to be the case where if you're a front end engineer, you weren't a back end engineer, but now it's more full stack engineering. You're doing both sides of things. So if you're working on a startup, with a very few amount of engineers, you're gonna be using, you're gonna be building on both the back end and the front end. And sometimes it makes it a lot faster to, de to develop on with JavaScript versus let's say Rails or Python where you're gonna switch up and do some context switching around things. Now, whether you should use Next.js or not. So this is gonna be my opinion specifically. So I use Next.js to build TrackFi. Uh, TrackFi is a finance platform. There's a dashboard aspect of it. There's a front end UI aspect to it, but it was very easy to get up and running with Next.js because I was all in the same code base. So you're gonna to wanna to use Next.js or some type of other full stack framework. If you're the only engineer and you wanna get something up and running very quickly, that is what it's great for. Um, but when I started, it was just pages router. And what, is, what does that mean? So since it's an opinionated framework, <laughs> I found this GIF on, on Reddit. Uh, and so when, it, when Next.js first started, it is very opinionated. So every single time you created a file in this, let's say pages folder, it would turn into a, a slash dashboard or slash home page. And that would turn into a page. So, um, it was very simple and easy to get up and running, but with recent changes, they're trying to switch to this app router. Um, so it's a different way of coding and both right now both are supported and you have documentation for both of those different ways. And so I think that's where the confusion comes in for a lot of people. Um, even I was going to create a tutorial on how to get started with next auth in your next application. And the documentation is so fragmented because you have two different ways of uh, formatting things between an app router and a pages router. And then also next off doing their own thing of like trying to switch the naming around things. So it has been a little uh, confusing lately. And if you search on Reddit of Next.js, um, it's just a bunch of things making fun of app router that it's not ready yet. Um, and they're referencing Dan or Dan Abramoff right now. Uh, and even he is, he has had a huge impact on React and in the way that things are going. And even he is saying that there's way too many changes, way too many uh, code commits to fix bugs along the way. So is it really production ready? Uh, that is questionable. Um, so just take that into consideration when you're when you're developing with React or with Next.js specifically, uh, if some of the things coming up. Um, so what are the other options if you don't use Next.js? So you could use just plain Node and plain React by itself. So that 
instead of having a single full stack application, you would kind of have two separate applications uh, with the React just handling the front end and Node just handling the back end. And the advantage of this is that you can just switch out the front end if you want. So over the years, when I first started developing, Angular 1 was the big front end framework. And then you would have Node on the, Mac, uh, on the back end. And then React came around, and that replaced Angular 1. And then Angular 1 completely rewrote the library, and then they have Angular 2, 3, and whatever it is. Now, I don't even know at this point. Uh, and now they have, at one point in time, they had Gatsby, which is another framework using React. Uh, and then they have Vite, which is, and then they had Create React App. So the front end technology is always changing, but on the back end, they were always using Node. So if I were to start a, a company right now, I would use Node on the back end because try, true, and test it. It's consistently being used on the back end these, on these applications. And then that allows you to use whatever framework you want. Uh, if you using Next.js and in two years you want to switch it up to something else, maybe you want to use Vue as well, that's another library, then you can do that pretty easy and quickly. And so that's a quick snapshot of what Next.js is, what it's composed of. Remember, it's composed of both React and Node, React on the front end, Node on the back end, and JavaScript is the core language being used throughout. And so hopefully that was helpful, and uh, tune in for next time.